Hello, I'm Emma Louise Coffey and you're welcome to the Dairy Age, the Chagas Dairy Podcast. We're bringing you the latest information, insights and opinion to improve dairy farm performance. On this week's episode, Michael O'Donovan gives tips and advice on correcting grass quality in grazing swords. And I first asked Michael about cumulative growth to date. There's a lot of variation on farms, so what we're, we'll be looking at is uh, probably about five and a half grazings um, per paddock per farm at the moment. Um, and the variation as regards grass growth will be from, you know, five tonne to about eight and a half tonne on farms. So about six, six, six point three tonne growing year to date. And with the 6.3 tonne on average across farms in Ireland, you know, we're looking at, we had a, I suppose, a, a shorter drought period than we saw in um, the year 2018. But is the impact of the drought evident in terms of overall production on farms? And I, I suppose, is there a hit in growth when we compare it with a year like last year? Like last year was a really good year as a guy's growth, you know, quite steady all, all the way through. This year... This year, you know, the drought that we had, which was probably more confined to the eastern half of the country, really, um, in that, in that, in that, let's say, May, June period. You know, if you look at Munster, the Munster farms, bar North Tipperary, never really suffered as such. So, as such, for, for, from our perspective, uh, you know, some of the farms in in Leinster would probably be half a ton back of what they what they should be. I know, you know, in the last two to two and a half weeks that you know we've got it we see we've seen uh, growth to recover and it's you know well above demand here at the moment but you know if you look if you look at it nationally you know the drought really affected the eastern counties and the, it was the eastern seaboard counties like you know probably Carlow, Kilkenny, um, parts of Wicklow, Loud, um, Mead especially um, so they're they were they were the really I suppose bogey counties as regards growth uh, and, and, you know, other parts of the country weren't really affected as such. Can you give us a picture of the current situation nationally? Where is growth, average farm cover and pre-grazing yield at? There's been a huge recovery in the last two weeks, given, you know, the levels of rainfall that we've got. And I suppose, you know, there was residual nitrogen built up on farms um, from, from you know, the spreading that went on in, 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 uh, in the early half of the year. So we're back on an even keel as regards about 70 kilos of growth. Demand is around 55 mark. So, you know, there's a fair bit of surplus. If you look at that, there's about 15 kilos surplus grass being grown on farms. So that's beginning to push up pre-grazing yields on farms now. So in the last, let's say, 10 days, we've seen um, farmers 10 days ago take out surplus grass. And again, this has happened again in, in last week. Obviously, it won't happen today and yesterday, given the, some of the rainfall that we've had. But, you know, over the weekend, fellas uh, have, have had to take out surplus grass. So we, we've seen some bit of a recovery taking place. And that's that's likely to continue, given where the weather is at the moment um, and where you are as the garage rotation linked. And, um, you know, you, you mentioned farmers are taking out surplus grass and this is probably the most effective way of controlling quality uh, during the mid-season where we have surplus growth. But, you know, quality and graze outs has been a challenge over the last um, number of weeks on farms you know farmers are saying they can't get to that four centimeter mark and you know they're really questioning the quality of the swords so can you give us some options and, and some advice in terms of correcting quality yeah so look, look the best way of correcting quality is keep, is keep the herbage mass ahead of the cows you know some way manageable and like at most of the time we're talking about you know between 13 to 1600 kilos and really that's the the first way of managing quality but even in the last 10 days you, we can, even here in Moor Park we've had to start correcting some paddocks some of the paddocks that we can correct um and that's about probably 15 percent of the farm we've corrected with with bales and you know just take, taking out the surplus grass and we we'd see there's probably another 15 to 20 percent to come to be corrected you know in the next let's say month to six weeks and then there's paddocks where where you know we were we were at the cusp of feeding bales probably about six days away from feeding bales here back three weeks ago and some of those paddocks were on longer rotations had a build up at the base of let's say it was lignified and and, and there was a lot of small seed heads at low herbage mass come in so we've had to we've had to just come in with them more and, and, and top them out um it hasn't been that many but, but we wouldn't have been able to get it corrected through grazing. So we probably, we topped out about four or five paddocks on the Clover study, about four or five paddocks in the once a day study. Uh, and Mick Egan ran, ran into surpluses in his study, so he, he corrected it that way. But, you know, 
these were paddocks that we would we wouldn't we wouldn't have been able to correct them with grazing. So we actually went in with the moor, not that we don't have a topper. So down pretty low to clean get a good clean out because many farmers come back to me in the middle of the year and say, Well, you know, you you know, the the guy cutting didn't get down low enough and I've had a problem here with graze outs and I've measured some of the some of the some of the post cutting heights at maybe five centimeters. You know, cows can graze down to four and below four if, if they have to, if it's good enough quality. So it's important that if you are correcting those paddocks with with um with a more that you go down low enough. Um you can pre mow. Um we, we don't generally do that. Uh some farmers do it and you know I suppose it can be done on a on a once off basis but to be honest with you uh we we're we, we're more focused on getting the coat to select out what you can graze and then correct that after. And we, so, when you're talking about, um, say, topping, your your preference is uh, after grazing as opposed to. Pre- it is, yeah, it is, uh, because you know you you, you know you, you 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 can do you can you can see what they can graze out as a guards, you know their preference, and then you know sometimes when you're pre mowing, you're pre mowing a lot of dung pads, and sometimes you're probably just better off to take them off with a topper and, and, and let them clean out. And looking then to fertilizer, Michael, um, you know, farmers are at the stage now where they're at their, you know, they're, they've one or two applications of fertilizer left. Now, a lot of the time you're balancing the remainder of your fertilizer allowance for the year. Yeah. But could you give us a recommendation in terms of timing, products and rates for fertilizer if we've two rounds left? Yeah, so I was like the, the, the paddock you're grazing this morning, actually, will probably be the first paddock that you close in October. So there's probably about four more grazings to be got after today on that paddock. So, you know, you're looking at probably grazing that the 1st of August, probably end of August, and then you're grazing the 20th of September and probably the 10th of October. That's probably generally how that, pa- how that, how that, how that, those paddocks at the moment, that, that, that you're grazing at the moment are going to work through. So, like where you are as regards uh, fertilizer, uh, we, w- we would be saying, you know, point, but about 0.75 to uh, a unit a day as regards as regards uh, fertilizer so that's about that's about uh, 25 units in the month um you know obviously we've been using protected urea here and the results today have been very good actually this year protected urea has uh, outperformed can on Brian McCarthy's plots here in Moorpark and Clonakilty and like this is perfect weather for protected urea um so we wouldn't be going away from that. However, in the autumn, as you get as you get a build, as you go into the autumn, you may need to start looking at some K products and putting some K blends in, into 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 the fertilizer strategy. Just just to 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 make sure that you're putting back the maintenance of K, especially on the high producing farms. You know, you can see some of those farms aren't even getting maintenance K, even with slowly going out on the on the platform. But like. You will need nitrogen to build up. Um, you will need nitrogen to build up on uh, on the on, on on the grazing platform, um, and that's nitrogen and rotation length are probably the key things. So you know, what probably you you would be spreading and on, on, on the second last round would probably be you know thirty, uh, thirty units of, of of nitrogen, maybe thirty five units of nitrogen. Um, actually, one thing that's going to come through in in the app and past in pasture base in the pasture base app probably tomorrow or the next day is that we will have the cumulative year to date um fertilizer a spread on farms in p and k and that'll come through as um when you go into the app when you go into put in your fertilizer so that's probably a new guide that 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 would be useful for farmers for the for 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 the future going forward and you know you could say it should have been there well before now and just the last uh, point to pick up on, Michael, um, a lot of people intended on receding paddocks maybe in April or May of this year. And they, I suppose, pull back given the dry weather. Um, we're now heading into mid-July. Is there still time to recede on farms? There is, yeah. And and August is probably a very good month as regards where, you know, you can get you build up a grass and, and you can get, uh, you know, proper soil temperatures to, to, to move it. And we would say, you know, late July, early August is, is the key time. And given the weather we have now, um, if there's paddocks not performing, yes, it should be done. Now, it was a good spring for receding and a lot of very good recedes have been produced. But, you know, um, for, for farmers, there still is an option. But like, really, if you're receding in early August, those paddocks probably have to be sprayed off in the next week to 10 days. 
And at a cost of in around 300 euro an acre, and given that we have a low milk price year, um, you know, in, in your opinion, is receding, um, I suppose, a practice that we can forego this year? Or is it something that we need to do every year? Well, the best guys are receding, whether it is a low milk price year or, or a high milk price year. And, you know, the return on receding um, as regards um, what it returns to you is, you know, we can we 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 reckon that the the cost receding is returned to you within about eighteen months of putting that sward in. So, like I've seen new receipts to grow well above what the old permanent what they've replaced in an old permanent pasture in a spring scenario. That's not probably the case in an autumn scenario. But for us, um, you know, the mill price is probably not going to be as, as bad as forecasted uh, earlier in the year as it will be. So, you know, um, if you want good grass, if you want grass that's going to kind of be dependable, um. Quite irrespective of season, that's probably the newer type of swords that are coming that 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 you're going to need. And the other part of that is, um, you know, you can get clover in um, if you go in with an early autumn reseed. If you go into a late autumn, and that will be very late autumn, yeah, soil temperature is 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 going backwards, and you know, you need eight eight degrees is really the cutoff point for the, for 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 clover establishment. And at the moment, we're well well beyond that. We're at fourteen fifteen soil temperature. And just to to go into a little bit more detail, Michael, can you give us your main three tips on, you know, what's really important to establish a good reseed? I suppose seed bed, really, um, making sure the seed bed is, is fine, uh, fine and, and firm. That's 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 one of the key things. Um, you know, whether it's ploughed or dist or, um, or min tilled, um, when we did that in our work here, when the seed bed was correct, uh, we got the same, pretty much the same establishment and pretty much the same production, uh, over year production from those reseed. The second thing then is post emergent spray. Um, whatever we say uh, about dock control, it can only be properly and permanently controlled with good post emergent spray. And uh, for farmers out there, uh, you know, Legumex DB is coming off, coming off market this year, and there should be enough for for next year supply. But you know, sometimes you know maybe. Maybe people need to purchase in advance for next year's reseeds as well this year. So, like we were, we are we are saying that the seedling dock needs to be controlled early in the, early in his lifetime, um, and that means you know probably at the two leaf stage you're going in w- controlling him, um, because the the other weeds you know a lot in a lot of cases you can graze them out bar chickweed, um, and then I suppose going in and grazing reseeds at the right time, um. Too often the uh, reseeds aren't grazed early enough, and like what I'm saying for the first grazing, you, you can let the cows in for two hours and just let them graze it off, let them tick in the sward, and and off they come. So you know it doesn't have to be ten centimeters, and and we would be saying it shouldn't be ten centimeters high. It should be around six to eight hundred kilos of dry matter. Cows go in for a short period, uh, graze it off, and you know you're back in there. You can go back in there in two weeks and graze that properly. I suppose to, to wrap up, um, Michael, um, just to highlight that the Grass 10 team are producing a weekly update and included in that and also on the pasture base um, on the website, we have predicted growth rates. So I guess they are really helpful planning tools to make informed decisions um, on grassland for the week or 10 days ahead. Um, you know, from, from your perspective, there is surplus available on farms where farmers can control grass quality. Um, you know, through, you know, maybe taking out uh, bales. But, you know, if there is a situation where there is, um, you know, seed heads growing, maybe topping is an option to control that. Thank you, Michael. OK, thanks, Simba Louise. And just, just for any farmers out there, um, the pasture-based landing page has both the predicted grow rates and the weekly grow rates from, from, from the country. That's it for this week's episode of the Dairy Edge podcast. And my thanks to Michael O'Donovan for joining me on this week's show. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe to the podcast. You can listen on Apple and Google Podcasts as well as Spotify. And for more information, go to the Chagas website at chagas.ie. I'm Emma-Louise Coffey and join me next time for your Dairy Edge.